Um, it's the old fella back of you here, or Mr. B, whatever you want to call me. Uh, Eloy, the band, if you like, the chat with the two young girls. Um, very good, very good, uh, very interesting. Anyway, I'll uh, say, the, you know, this is just saying, uh, this is what it's about. Information will be down below, so you can go and check them out, get over there and click on the link and whatever and go and check them out. They're absolutely fabulous. Anyway, there we go. Let's uh, let's do this. Hey, ho, let's go. Right, I'll just say sort of like, hello, everybody. Now, um, uh, Yeloy, is that how you pronounce the name? Yeah. Right. So we have Rose and Matilda. And um, basically, we've got a very young band which is what I'm here for. This is what I support, young up-and-coming bands. So my first question is, if you'd like to introduce yourselves, so you know, everyone knows who's who. Um, I'm Matilda. I'm the vocalist, and I also play drums, and I'm 13. I'm Rose. I'm the guitarist and bassist, um, and I'm 15. 15 soon, I'm 14. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm old Mr. B, and I'm 69. Um... <laughs> I think they all. I think they all know that now. Um, right. First of all, how did you come up with the name for the band? Well, we're half Chinese Vietnamese, and yeah. Yi Loi, you girls in Cantonese. Oh right, right. Because I know it's got a sort of Oriental sound to it, if you, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, um, that's interesting because I mean to think of a band name and get something that's that's unique. It's it becomes difficult these days. So, right, so, drummer, singer, well, you both sing, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right, so, Tilda, what sort of, um, okay, what's, like, drumming, what sort of drums do you play? Any, any particular make or any anything like that? Um, no, I just have, uh, I started off with, like, a small, like, a really small, like, kid's practice drum like set. just a practice drum set and then for my birthday i got the kit i have now um i'm not sure what make it is no, don't worry about make the matter it's nothing nothing it's not yeah it's nothing no. it's nothing special so i've just been playing on that and just yeah for a year or two now i think right right okay now then rose guitars you seem to have a few Right. What's your favourite one? <laughs> my favourite one is my one called, I named it Dave. It's a 2011 Les Paul Classic, I think. Yeah, Les Paul Classic. It's a double cutaway. Uh, I play it in quite a lot of the... I've seen uh, that one. Yeah. Um, uh, I love my moves right as well. I think that's a 99, I think. Uh, and then I also, uh, most of them are my dad's, but like I have my own like favorites. I also really like, I've got a gold top Les Paul Deluxe, which we named after my grandma. It's called Mero. I've I seen used that it one. On, used on the Thin Lizzy videos. Nice. Well, I've got four, four Les Pauls. Right. This is me. That is. That's the uh, Les Paul HP. You know, nice color. Paul, that's why I got it. I got it for half price, brand new. But anyway, that's another. That's, that's the only reason I've got it. But it's still got push pulls on every every knob. You can do all right. sorts. You can do all sorts with it. It's got dip switches. Um, I'm, I don't call myself a musician. Or if you like, my um, intro is what I did myself on my me, me channel. Um, I am presently working on the uh, actual song of my own, but we'll get it. Uh, you know, it's another story. Um, <laughs> but um, right now, the Ramones, you're into the Ramones, aren't you? Very much so. How yeah. did that? How did that come about? Well, our um, a lot. Our dad and our auntie are original fans from back in the day. In fact, 
yeah, I think a couple of days ago was the anniversary of when my dad first seen them in Liverpool on their first uh, day of their English tour at, at Eric's club. And he met, he met them beforehand and was talking to them. And then as to how we got into them was, I think around summertime when we were driving around America, we had, we always had the Ramones on, on the car and it really kind of like sparked that interest. Right. Like, Great. And then the, the year after that, because I, I was getting well into them, I met CJ Ramone for the first time. And then after that, I was just hooked. I was just, you know. It, it's, that's, that's great. That's great because the Ramones are very popular. Although, you know, I mean, you talk to anybody about it. I mean, I do. But what surprised me now, I've seen Thin Lizzy live several times. And you do Thin Lizzy covers as well. Big lip Thin Lizzy fan. Also, obviously, um, Alice Cooper. Um, but, um, you know, this, this, is, this, this is something. And you made a fantastic job of it. So I'm going to be reacting to more of your stuff for sure. And, and I think what you're doing is absolutely great. So what I'm trying to do is trying to get you out there promoted. A lot of my um, followers, if you like, whatever you want to call them, a Japanese, because I react to a lot of Japanese, Japanese bands, and um, Indonesian, and from all over, worldwide. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know. And this is this is this is really this is really good. And what you're doing, I think, is absolutely fantastic. I really do. And uh, you know, so have you got plans? Where have you got plans coming up? Anything? Um, our EP. Uh... Just call, it's called Get Going. It'll be out in, I think, maybe a week or two's time. It'll be out soon. We've got pre-orders on that already. Um, I wish I had a copy here to show you. Uh, where we started officially recording our album, well, sorting it out, our next album. Uh, we had a single out couple. You, you reacted to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like for now, we're getting the uh, EP out. It's a six six track EP, and two there's two covers and four originals on it. Right, nice. Now, I have a question for you with this. Right, when you go to, to like I react to one of your songs, the information in the description there's not a lot. You haven't got like links to Facebook and things like that. Are you thinking of putting them in? Yeah. That Thanks for the input on that, because I think we will then, in that case, because I hear you said that <clears throat> there wasn't that much information about... Sorry. <clears throat> That's it. You can put a bit of information in about yourselves, because what I what I managed to put in, I go hunting and I go to about, and, uh, and about on your YouTube channel, it just says who you are and your names, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, the more information, the better, and then people can get to know you, and the more links you've got in there, it's like with me, I've got links to um, like me Twitter and stuff like that. That was yeah. Nice. Uh, I'll pass, pass that on then. <laughs> yeah, we're on like yeah. every. But the, the more you can put in, the better it'll help get get you noticed. Um, I'll give you a for instance because I share everything I do on Twitter. So obviously, when I react to you, it's now being shared on Twitter. By me doing that is how I found all the bands. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you, you know, they thank, and some of them, and some of them thank me for what, a lot of them thank me for what I'm doing. And that's how I get to interview people in different ways and things, because I'm trying to promote the young people. Because when I was, when I was younger, you know, oh, dad, I want to buy a guitar. Well, what do you want one of them for? You know, what do you want a guitar mm -hmm. for? And I'm thinking, hey, but obviously you've got great parents. <laughs> but, but so your dad plays the guitar, your father. Yeah. In the 80s. That's good. Yeah. I, I say I play. I've, I've got um, 12 guitars. Well, one's a bass and one's, I've got a seven string as well. well my dad says that uh, I shouldn't count them because if you count them, you, you think you've got too many and you won't want any more. I've got a T-shirt that says I have too many guitars. No one said. Um, so, you know, but yeah, no. Um, there's a bass player 
uh, from the UK called Daisy Pepper. She's got 64. Oh, wow. Wow. So I thought, nah, mine's nothing. Then. <laughs> but I've got, I mean, yeah, it's just, just, it's just things I've collected over a period of time. So do you do live gigs? No, but we're thinking of doing a live stream. Yeah, live soon. stream on Instagram. Instagram and Facebook and all that. We're going to do like a live set. I don't know how many songs, but we're going to invite a couple of like family and friends around. So we've got like a real audience as well. Because we never really done it before because we kind of came about uh, like, I know we came about before lockdown and everything, but we progressed to the level that we are working at now around lockdown time. So yeah, we've done it before, but it wasn't, it wasn't proper. And it was like, yeah, it was a very long time ago as well. I think so, about what, three years ago, maybe we did, we did a live stream, but it wasn't properly set up or. Yeah. Right. All you gotta do is let me know when you're doing the live stream, and I'll get it out there to try and get 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 people to watch it, you know. And because I, I love live streams, um, I'm also a big Bandmade fan. Have you heard of Bandmade? Um, no. Right, no, Japanese no. rock band, five five ladies dressed up as mates, right? Yeah. But believe you and me, the music that they put out is. It's real rock music, you know. Um, but anyway, that's another thing. But you see, obviously, when that when lockdown happened with these bands, they were doing live streams. And I said, so when when we, when we get over COVID, why can't a band when they go on tour live stream it as well, one of the concerts? Mm -hmm. So anyway, some of them have started doing it, which is good. Let's say there's a band you want to see. They're not touring over here. They're touring America wherever you know and you'd like to see them but you can't go and they do a live stream obviously they're going to be making making money from the live stream as well that's another thing they do you know you can you can get to that point where you know people can pay to to watch you which mm -hmm. is another yeah. another thing as know. well um but but yeah uh martial amplifier yeah yes yeah Yes, that's it. I, I, I don't have an amplifier. I've got a Helix. Uh, yeah, I've got, for the videos that we do, you can see it in the background of that, um, I use a DSL 100. Yes. Uh, when I'm recording, I either use a Marshall Origin 50 or a Black Star, like a little five watt Black Star. So I know Black Star, yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with all that because, well, so I've got a, if you, if you know what a Helix is, it's quite a big thing, and it's got umpteen different amplifiers in there, and also you can do all sorts with it. Anyway, uh, right, vocal vocal wise, what uh, what what equipment are you using for that? It's such as like microphone and things. A couple of, I honestly don't know much on the vocal. Yeah, we side. just um, for like proper recording. We have like the the set. We, we have a proper vocal like set up. Um, yeah. Except when we're recording, it'll be a wire from the room we're recording in into the living room, and we've got it padded out. In fact, when we started out, we had a wardrobe padded out with duvets, and you'd sing into that. That was our makeshift vocal booth. Because right now we're we're in the middle of like building our our proper studio, which I'll have obviously. A proper setup like that but still for now we are recording in a living room with lots of cushions and lots of blankets yeah fortunately for me because the way i i, I record my stuff it's headphones and so because i live in actually i'm in a flat you know i'm above somebody so i i can't and uh, you know i think i'd upset the neighbors <laughs> but um so all my recording is done like direct but yeah but the way you're doing it padding out things and doing that's what that's all you can do it's the same with me with this like me backdrops obviously in green screen um I've, I've, that's why i do all the time with green screen because if i'm feeling a bit down i want to be somewhere else i change my background <laughs> so. you want to have a go at green screen we're going to experiment with that i think like my intro 
on my thing. It is actually me playing. I use it again. I use the green screen, right? So right. that's why I'm in space. But then I did a, a black and white version of it where it's snowing. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, you can do so much with a with a green screen. Um, but um, I mean, it's like I look like I live in a recording studio because I've got this is like what I use on YouTube. Then I've got another. I use an iMac, if you like. That's just purely for my music. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, things like that. So, and right, okay, pedals. Pedals, what pedals do you use? I don't use that many pedals. When I do use pedals, I use a overdrive pedal occasionally, or sometimes I will use a, uh, what's it called? A crunch distortion only occasionally, but really, our motto is just turn everything up, like crank it up loud. Um, I actually got a Crybaby Wah pedal recently. I've been playing with that a bit, but that's, um, it's like I've got to develop a whole new technique with using it. So it's a work in progress. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I understand. I had a Crybaby well, umpteen years ago. So it was in a band like in the 70s, but yeah, this is where people fall out of me. Someone says about I said, look, let's want to do our own stuff, start doing our own stuff. And someone says, well, let's do some Beatles covers. I left. Uh -huh. They called me the punk rocker before punk rock was invented, I think. I wasn't in for the slow stuff. So, you know, and of course, what you're doing is great. Cause it's right up the right streets. It's the sort of thing I like. And you're doing a very good job of it. Uh, okay, practice. How often do you practice? Well, we have to try and fit it into our school schedule because we've got, yeah, we go to school every day, but we like to dedicate our weekends a lot to practice and rehearsals and stuff. But individually, we practice of an evening after school, yeah, and after other activities that we get up to, you know. But um, there's no pressure on it, really, right. Is this what you'd like to do for a living? No, because I think about as soon as it becomes about money, I think it's no not that much fun anymore. We like yeah. to do it. For, we like it's to do fun. it for fun. Yeah. Do you know what? So. That's the best answer I've ever had because it it's like oh, you've got a YouTube channel, and, you know, everyone thinks it's all about money. No, in my mm. case. Everything, 99% of the stuff I do is copyrighted. So the copyright, if any money is made off of adverts, it goes to the owner of the copyright, not me. I do it for the love of music and getting the world to see up and coming people like yourself. So if you, if you, if you can do it like that and keep it as fun, absolutely fabulous. It really is. Uh, and, you know, the, the thing is, though, money is the root of all evil. As, as we know um and that's it i do this because i want to do it not because anyone i mean okay i'm i'm retired now so obviously every every day is like the weekend but it's not i mean i, I put three reactions up a day so I, I do put a lot of time into it but the the idea for me is is, is to get people like yourselves out there for people to see and and if you can if you, if you can do do it without touring if you can do live streams and sell your eps and stuff fabulous because that's that's going to get plugged what was it called get going right it's all right i'm making it. i was going to grab one and show you but it's all right I've, i think i've seen i think i've seen the tilde with it on holding it up somewhere yeah, we, i like promote push, it as push much it at the moment so as much as we can Oh, don't worry. This is going to get promoted. Because you see, when I do this, when I do this, I put a, um, a little bit at the start, like saying what it is, and then I put on the end. That's when I go. Now, I never ask on my channel for people to like and subscribe, right? But yeah. for people I react to or do, I go, I go mental with it. <laughs> get over there. Get over there. You know, because... What you're doing is absolutely fun. And you, you raise this. Right, yeah, I ask a question for you. As a young guitarist, when you, how were your fingers when you started playing? 
Um, I didn't really, I, I definitely noticed because I was like, because I was kind of young, I was like, what, nine or 10 or something. Um, size wise, it wasn't that, that much of a problem. Um, because I started mainly on chords, so the lead work didn't really get done. Uh, but it, it was, it hurt, like as, as it does. And being a little kid, I was like, you know, oh, this is a bit, why, why would I to this be hurting me kind of thing? But I got over it. The, yeah. But the determination was there, wasn't it? To oh, go. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I first got a guitar, I'll be about. Um, 17 and 19, I think that's when I first got. But there was no such thing as light gay strings. They're all like big, yeah. heavy things. And you needed a vice to press them down. Because now these days I grip too tight because of the way, you know, I played. And the other day I damaged my hand anyway, playing my bass guitar. <laughs> well, yeah, I can understand that. My um, Epiphone Explorer has. Yeah, I think gauge 10 on, and I can definitely tell the difference because I think I, I usually use nines because um, that's what feels comfortable. But yeah, the 10, I can tell the difference. That's interesting because I normally have tens. Pick one of my guitars up, it's got nines on. I thought, where's the IE gone? <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> like, you know, it's, it's like, <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, I mean, um, I've got all I've got the, the, all sorts of uh, equipment and stuff. It's just it's just me for me, me love for music and what you do. Right now, then, when you so when you sorry, Tilda, we're leaving you out here, aren't we? Because <laughs> um, do you use any effects on the bass? Uh, we use a direct injection uh, for some of it. Oh, I, I don't know. Hold on, we direct injection in recording and then sometimes we'll do the mic up uh, effects usually that's what my mum sorts out mum and dad sort out the effects on um our program reaper we have our own effects combo kind of thing i can't reaper. think yeah yeah that's what i um, use <laughs> all right I'm trying to think of the combinations that we use but i really can't remember from memory yeah no it doesn't, doesn't doesn't matter look you <laughs> For someone your age, the way you're talking, you know damn sight more than what a lot of grown-ups know about the equipment they use. I can assure you, you know. But um, but but the, the thing about it all, the, the thing about it all is, you see, like um, the, the, this song I've done, it was all started by playing the bass guitar with distortion on. Yeah, I think right. we used distortion. Yeah. Because I got. Um, do you know the Stranglers song, Peaches? Yes, I very do. Well, very I've, right, I've got a five five string bass. Right, I got it. I've never, I, I don't do covers. I, it's just me. I think someone's already done it. I started playing that on it. I thought, <laughs> oh, you know, du, 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 du. I thought, hey, what's going on here? But anyway, so there's going to be a bit of a joke about that on my channel, but because they use distortion, I got a five. It's a five string bass I've got with. Mm -hmm. Active pickups, the, you know, do you know about active pickups? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because that, that makes the sound broader. Right. Battery off, there's a battery in the back, and then you play it and you're thinking, uh, and that, and the sound just goes broader, bigger. So you got to be careful. So, you know, it's, it keeps overpowering. So, right then, so, right, Tilda, because I'm going to leave you out. How did you start singing? Or when? I, I think I had always just liked like singing and I was they my mum and my dad and everyone just realized like oh I was really good. And then Rose at that time Rose was already started like playing guitar and everything. And we did a cover of uh, Today You Love Tomorrow the World. And the Christmas and the Christmas one. The Ramones Christmas song, Merry Christmas, I Don't Want to Fight tonight. We both sung on that one and our dad played guitar. And then just from there on, I was just the singer and then she, we started doing more covers. Because she's always liked to sing and she was in the school choir and that. Yeah, I was always, we were both in both the choir. Both in the school choir, yeah. So. But yeah. I like, well, when you're singing, I, I love your attitude you've got for the songs. It's great, it's great. 
that's what makes it. You know, you're not just there. You, you, you're letting go. You're letting, oh, yeah. And, and by the way, Rose, while I think about it, somebody somebody asked me this question to ask you. Uh, right, yeah, you know, this is about bandmate, the, the band. Konami, the, the lead guitarist, you know, like you're stretching out. You know, when you play, you, you stretch. Yes. Not in, yeah. She does that as well. She says, oh, she needs to practice more to get like Konami. <laughs> so, you know, but you obviously don't know who she is. But the thing is, it's, it's a guitar thing. But, um, but yeah, when, when I start, I've, I've been telling people that I'm doing this, you see, so to try and get you out there. I've been doing this two years. So how long, when, so, okay, when did you start the band? From what, what uh, how long ago? Um, what was it? Three, it was about three or four years ago, but we didn't, uh, and we were recording very primitively. It was over in a storage barn. We were like recording kind of live. Um, it started off live and then we did it kind of live and then one day my dad like at, at the beginning of lockdown as our lockdown project we got Reaper and we got proper recording and we got better and better at that because even if I listen back to our old Reaper recordings they sound a little primitive but we're still learning about it now so You're right. yeah oh yeah oh, it's, it's mixing and all the rest of it it's it's like See, I started, what, my YouTube channel a couple of years ago, you know. And I mean, how many subscribers have you got on your channel? 2,000 and odd, I think, right. yeah. Yeah, because this is, this is funny. This is, this is the funny thing I found about YouTube. Reaction channels, okay, I've got 14,000, but, you know. But other people that do the odd reaction and then do their own music, they don't get many views on their own music. <laughs> It's no matter how good it is, but so this is what I'm trying to do: is try and promote to promote people, get them get them over to your channel, and uh, don't worry, I will screenshot a picture of the uh, of the album. Don't worry, I'll get that. I'm I'm good at uh, trying to find pictures. That's another thing you see. Um, like Facebook, it took me a while to find you to find your Facebook. I had to go yeah. looking, um, and that's what I said about the link. And of course, you see, then that's where you can pinch pictures from and things to put up. I think this is from uh, Facebook, isn't it? The one behind me. Or is it? Or something. It's on all platforms, so it could be it. Oh, right. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm blocking Tilda. Sorry about that. And that's your brother, is it, on the base? Yeah. Does, he, does he get involved? Um, not on most recordings. Most recordings, it's me. But... Um... He's he's learning at the moment. Um, people seem to really like him as an addition, but I suppose it's not two girls anymore. But people really do like it when we have him on. Um, yeah, he's playing a short scale precision there. Right, AR, that, right now, have you heard of a band called The Warning? Sounds no. Sounds familiar. Three sisters from Mexico. Oh, right more. Right. Um, Check them out, and and they they they're going to be really big. They're going to be really big. But again, it's like sisters, you know. They work well together. Yeah, like in my cause... case, brothers and sisters always seem to fall out. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and you've got you you've definitely got something. You've re, you've really got something there. That's the thing. You, you know, like you can watch a band. You can go out and watch your local band, and you're thinking, oh, there's something missing. You, you know what I mean? You are, it's there, you've got it, you've got it, you've got the ability. It, it's just so nice to see. And, and, and Tilda's voice, I love you for that reason. You, you've got the attitude. You know, you don't miss about you. Yeah, go on, let's give it. And, and that's great. That's what it's all about. It's, this is so nice. This is so nice to, to see as well. Oh, by the way, is there anything you want to ask me? Um, I was going to ask you about uh, what... What um, lineups of Thin Lizzy did you see live? Uh, right. Well, I never saw the. I, I didn't see the original one with Eric Bell, but it was it was yeah. uh, Phil and it Downey, uh, Scott Gorham, and the Drunken Scotsman. Oh, Brian Robinson. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? There's a bottle of scotch. By the end of the gig, there was that much left in it. 
I, did, I thought that those stories were jokes, but no, real? no, you see them live, and they're absolutely brilliant live, absolutely brilliant. I've seen Gary Moore as well. I'm a big Gary Moore fan. I've seen him live as Gary Moore. Um, so I saw that, like, if you like the proper, the proper Thin Lizzy lineup back in. Now, have you heard of a band called T Rex? Yes, I've seen them several times. That's what got me into music, T Rex. Very early on, isn't that? Well, I'm old. I did pop out. I popped out in 1953. You know, <laughs> only a, only eight years after World War Two. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> but um but yeah and um i've seen a lot of a lot of lot of bands in me time um you know you know slip you must have heard of slipknot yes, yeah i've seen them um that you know the bands you know papa roach i've heard of them but I yeah I, I, I met them i met them anyway that's they're boring they're boring <laughs> uh still still panther is another band they're they're a, they're a bit naughty what they sing about, but the but I met them. They are a great bunch of guys. They are great when I met them as well. Um, but um, this is this is what music's all about. You see, what well, what you're doing is staying is staying chilled about it, doing it right, and having fun. That's what it's all about. And it and it shows it shows in, in when you performing if you like it shows you can see because it well if, well i'm going to do this i'm going to video myself when i get this song sorted out because i've got uh, have you heard of a guy called axe japan yeah he, maybe I... scotland he's up scott he's in scotland he yeah. does covers and his own music and stuff like that and uh, well he's, he's more of a friend now because I, I often zoom with him he's going to He's, he, I'm calling him my mentor because I don't, I can't read music. I'm self-taught, right? So I just, I just blunder away. What didn't help me, I'm dyslexic. Now, when I was at school, they didn't have a clue what that was. I just thought, you know, I'm thick. I've always felt, and all my life I felt useless. Honest, it's it's a job to explain. But anyway. So he's helping me out. He's helping me out with 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 that. He likes what I've done, and um, so we'll we'll work that together. Takes longer, of course, because you're sending bits and bobs backwards and forwards. But what you're doing, so singer drummer, when did you start playing the drums then, Tilda? Uh, back in lockdown, when we started using Reaper and all that stuff, when they when Rose started like learning how to use it, I decided I wanted to play drums. She wanted to know, like another part of it because I was learning how to mix and record and she's like... And we already, like I said, we had a, a kid little practice kit. So I just started on that and yeah. That's great. It's great. It's just great. It's just great to see. Yeah, I'll, I'll think I'll learn the drums next thing they are. You're playing them, you know, it's... Uh, it's it's great when you're young, your brain's a sponge. When you get older, it's a brick. It takes ages for things to things to get in. But if, see, I, I, I've got like drum samples. I use drum samples. Uh, oh, there's, yeah. there's programs you can use as well. I mean, I've got vocals, right, that are copyright free that I can use. Oh. I, I can't sing to save my life. Vocal, I need one of them. You know, I'm going to use one for a laugh. But this is what I like. Everything, everything about what you're doing is, is so, is so genuine, <clears throat> and it's just great. It's, the, the, the thing about about it all is the way it's the way it started. How you got the name, right? You know what part? I'm, I will ask you. What part of the UK are you in? Um, Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the accent? Oh uh, well, uh, our parents, our parents are both scousers, but we kind of we live outside. We're both born in Liverpool, but we live outside of, and we went to we go to um, schools so uh, where we taught to speak like this. Well, you're in the right town. You're in the right town for the music, then, aren't you? Songwriting, because I mean, it's not. I'm not a Beatles fan, but they, they, they wrote some incredible songs. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's just that. The music's a bit tame for me. 
I'm more yeah. more for the rough edge. Oh, this is this is this is this is great though. Uh, and um it's great to see what you're doing. And I like the way you got the name, you know, because my pronunciation sometimes is is very bad. You know, especially when trying to uh say, well say a, a Japanese name, say, you know. Hilo is spelt phonetically, so you can't yeah, it's not that to go wrong. Right. Yeah. But um, well, it's like me. It's just, I just to be. So yeah. So well, is there anything else you want to know about what I, what I do or anything or or not? You know. Do you have anything you want to tell us? I don't. I don't, don't can't think of any questions. But it's all right. It's all right. I mean, I mean, I think I just about asked you everything I want to because I, there's loads of sometimes you're thinking, oh, it's like, I don't write anything down. That's I just go with the flow. I call it more of a chat than an interview. You know, it's to find out about what makes you tick, what makes the band tick. And I, at the moment, I think it's great what you're doing. It really is. It really is great. And if you're planning on um, doing the live stream, that's going to be fantastic. That's going to be fantastic. Uh, and you say, if you've got a bit of a little bit of an audience with you as well, that's good. Um, when, when Roughly when you're planning on that, a month or so or... Just it'll later be, on it'll this be quite year. a while probably later on this year yeah. we'll let you know when but it's that'd be great that'd be that'd be great any new any well, look i don't want to sort of give anything out or anything but yeah has you got anything new planned musically well we as i said we started on the album we've started on the album yeah but that's about that's about it for now i think yeah any more stuff going on youtube or not because i'm just going to go through everything you've done if you have a, I think there'll be a video out in a few, yeah, in in a a few, few weeks. weeks when the EP comes out or around the same time as the EP coming out. Good, because that means that I can plug that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm here for. Um, because you see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, on your chart. I'm going to go through doing a lot, of your, a lot of yours. I won't get, see, it's like most things, you don't get many views at the moment because I say majority of my people are so into the flipping Japanese music, you know, but the more I put up, the more you get noticed. Uh, have you heard of Nandy Bushel? Yes, I have. I thought you might, yeah. Right, when I first put her up, you know, didn't get many views, then all of a sudden people start to find it and then, well, here, you know, here we go. Um, is there any any um, oh yeah that's the point is there any any like band members you'd like to meet in real life? Um, I've already I've already met Paul Cook of the Sex Pistols twice. Right. Um, I think I really want to meet Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols. I want to meet Wayne Kramer of the MC Five. Um, one of the Thin Lizzy guitarists possibly. But, uh, I don't know either. Either Scott or maybe I'd really like to meet John Sykes, possibly, but you know. Um, what about you? Um, I don't know. Basically, everyone there. Yeah, that's just, it sounds it's quite pretty good. Yeah. Oh, we like the, yeah, we quite like the darkness at the moment. I wouldn't mind. Oh, meeting. we went to a concert. We went to a darkness concert in December. That was really good. Quite like yeah. one of them. One of, that's one of my sister's favorite bands. Don't, I don't, mm -hmm. I try not to talk about because I just set her off. It's going, oh, Justin, Justin, this, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, oh, it was on Anton Deck. Oh. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I mean, uh, and then I'll start talking about bands. I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about because they're all, all new. Although I'm old, I'm all for new, you see. Uh, but, you know, but, uh, but that's it. And I mean, would you like to collaborate with anybody? Hmm. Well, we wanted to we want to record with CJ one day. And there's been a couple of bands that, who have like said that if they were to do a tour in England or UK, they'd like happily either support us and or we, let us support them. And we did that thing for Thin the Z. We did the it was like the opening for the uh, Phil Phil Lillard Monument in West Dublin, Rome, I think. Well, no, it's, it's, 
I've been to the one in Dublin. Yeah, there was a new one. There was a new one though. Oh, and right. they got on part of the live stream for the unveiling of that. Yeah. So that I suppose that's kind of a collaboration. We but they oh, they wanted us to come over. Also, we did mm-hmm. one collabor another collaboration with a bunch of um oh. punk musicians, CJ included. It was a cover of the Ramones song Something to Believe in by this guy called Mikey and his Mikey and his Uke. Uke. Yeah. Ukulele put it together. The guys from Pennywise, No Effects. Oh, no. Uh, Melon Colin, yeah. Lagwagon, those kind of uh, me first and the Gimme Gimmies as well. That was really exciting. Right. Well, you know, there's um, there's another uh, a band called the Linda Lindas in America that's just kicked off. Oh, you've heard right. I thought you might have heard. Yeah, I've reacted to them as well. Um, they never got back to me about an interview, so <laughs> so. I do. I've sent about 15 emails out or whatever to different people. I don't mind if they say, look, get lost, you old so-and-so, you know, but they don't even get a reply. No. But, uh, but it's to me, I'm thinking, uh, you know, uh, and then, then I ask a band that where I need to get an interpreter. They go, yeah. Because <laughs> this, this, this makes a change not to have an interpreter because a lot of the times, if you've seen some of the interviews and chats and things, um, they, they are sort of a lot of, of Japanese and, and things like that. But, but this, this is great. Because um, uh, I've got one coming up with an Italian band. They speak English, so we're all right with that. Uh, this will be my second one. I know I always say this as well. You know, is it okay to do a second one, a second chat? You know, when things... Even if you want to promote something, we can set set it up and do it like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, just be interested. Because what, what I'm... No, I'll, I'll say this when I'm not recording. I don't want people to know what I'm doing. <laughs> but, but yeah, so anyway, look, I think we've uh, ch- chatted enough about it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop recording now. So we'll just say sort of... Uh, oh, I've got to find the stop button. That's what happens when you get old. Um, and then um, say, if you want to say cheerio to everybody, like bye bye or oh. arigato. Ah. <laughs> Here at last, our 10 GP, Yilo, Get Going. It's got seven tracks, five by us, and two covers. We'll let you know tomorrow where you can get it because it's going to sell fast because it's really good. Right, there you go. There you go from Liverpool, eh? Hey, absolutely great. And I really like what they're doing. Uh, EP coming out and everything else. I uh, will try and find all the information on that. So if you're interested in getting it, you'll be able to get it. Um, fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. There you go. They're doing it for fun, not for money which is great they you know absolutely great what they're doing it for that was the best answer i ever had so like i say information is down below uh and i'll get as much information as i can in there so you know go and check them out go over to their channel subscribe to it and also you know if you like what they're doing uh we'll see where you can get the ep from and everything else and uh, they are going to be putting more information in so which helps so there you go great 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 job Love their attitude. Love the love everything about what they're doing. Absolutely fabulous. Anyway, and thank you, everybody. I'd just like to thank everybody for all your comments, your support, and everything else. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, please, please, please stay safe. And this old fella will be back. Bye for now.